Uh, the Syrian general got leprosy and was sent down to the southern kingdom, excuse me, yeah, the northern kingdom, uh, to, uh, to get it taken care of. And uh, the king of Israel said, tore his clothes and said, he's trying to pick a fight with me. And Elisha sent a message and said, hey, send him to me. So he went to him and uh, Naaman went to Elisha's door and knocked and Gehazi came and said, yep, go wash seven times in the Jordan and uh, you'll be uh, cured. And uh, Naaman got upset and he said, well, I don't want to do that. That's, that's stupid. That's not what I expected him to do. And so finally, uh, one of his servants said, hey, you need to go do it. So he did, and sure enough, he was healed. Seven times washing in the Jordan River, and he was healed. It wasn't the river. It wasn't the water. It was God. Okay, so now he has his life back, and he is so grateful. And so what does he do? He goes right back to Elisha. He wants to thank Elisha. Now, he's got all of this stuff that the king gave him, you know, all of this clothes and all of this gold and silver and this reward that he was supposed to go and give to the prophet. So he goes back and he says, hey, he says, let me give you these gifts. And, and Elisha said, no, I don't need your money. And he said, well, well uh, you know, at least, uh, you know, take something. And Elisha said, no. And he said, well, uh, how about just two mules? Surely you and your servant need uh, mules to ride on. And, and we don't know if he actually took the mules, but he did say this. He said, you know what? Um, I, I have to go because I work for this king. And he goes into this temple uh, and he takes me with him and I have to go. It's part of my job. And, uh, and, if, and if you will forgive me for having to go into that temple with him when it's my job to do so. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us, I think, that he had put his faith in the God of Israel. And he realized that it was wrong to go into the temple of Rimen. Okay? Uh, and apparently there was a change in his life, and we're not just talking about the absence of leprosy. Uh, salvation changes people. Now, I don't know if we're going to find Naaman in heaven, but I like to think we will in any case. But whether Elisha took the mules or not, he wouldn't take anything else. And um, the uh, anyway, the, Naaman was probably a little disheartened that he didn't take anything, but he was thrilled. I mean, he had his life back. And so they're on their way back, and they're just kind of rolling along a little bit. But Elisha's servant, Gehazi, we're not sure why he did it. It was probably nothing but simple greed. But we find that Gehazi went after him and caught up with Naaman. And Naaman saw him coming and he stopped the chariot and he says, hey, what's going on? And Gehazi said, uh, well, you know what? Uh, we just had a couple of uh, sons of the prophets come and visit us. And, uh, and so Elisha has said, uh, could you just give us uh, some money? Just give us one talent of silver. Now, that's a lot of money, by the way. Okay, one talent of silver and, and just two of those outfits for the, uh, for the, the two servants of, of God, as though they would ever wear those Syrian outfits. <laughs> But in any case, uh, and Naaman said, well, oh, yeah, 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 here, take the two outfits. And, and I tell you what, there's two of them. Don't take one talent of silver. Take two talents, talents of silver. And so Gehazi said, well, okay. So he takes that stuff. And then he goes to this place, this deserted place, this tower, and he buries the stuff. And then he quick goes back to Elisha, and he walks in like nothing has happened. And I want you to see what happens. Take a look in 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. Um, and verse 25. But when he went in and stood before his master, and Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? Notice he asks a question. Because he wanted Gehazi to come clean and say, You know what? I went after him, and I got some of that stuff, and I probably shouldn't have it. I'm sorry. But Gehazi didn't confess. Instead, what does he do? He said, uh, well, he said, thy servant went no whither. Uh, okay, I, I didn't go anywhere. Okay, now, once again, let me 
teach you something here. When you're given an opportunity to repent, repent. Okay? When you're given the opportunity, when you're given the opportunity to do the right thing, even if you've done the wrong thing, when you get the opportunity to do the right thing, to confess your sin, to repent, do it. When your parents come to you and they say, JJ, Arthur, Melody, did you do this? And you have a choice. You can tell the truth or you can lie. Always, always, always tell the truth. Okay? Now, just practically speaking, if they're asking you, they probably already know the answer. Okay? They know what you did. Um, here, apparently, Elisha knew exactly what Gehazi did. Notice what it says here. It says... Uh, Verse 26, and he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? It is not, is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and manservants and maidservants? He says, Listen, that's not what we're about. That's not our purpose. This is not the time for that. When we get to heaven, we're going to have everything we want and everything we need. But here and now, no, this isn't it. Apparently, he, Elisha knew what money would do to people. And he wanted no part of it. And so, notice verse 27. He says, The leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper, as white as snow. Now, this was a terrible thing for Gehazi. But not only had he done a terrible thing, he had then lied about it. Maybe if he had told the truth, maybe if he had said, you know, I did wrong. Maybe Elisha would have said, okay, go get the stuff, catch up with Naaman and give it back to him. I, I don't know what Elisha would have done but I know it probably wouldn't have been this bad. So here's what I'm telling you. When you have the opportunity to do the right thing, do it. When you have the opportunity to repent, repent. When you have the opportunity to confess your sin, confess your sin, okay? It always, always, always goes better. Hey, love you guys. See ya. Bye.